Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm Aishwarya and part of our Jeet Ka Josh series, we are having complete biology mega revision for class 10 where we are going to cover questions from the entire syllabus. So there are going to be a total of 50 questions that we are going to be solving today is going to be on Menti platform. So everyone very quickly please make sure that you go to Menti and you get joined. So as you can see the code is there. It is 83500-02924. Everybody very quickly please make sure that you go ahead and you join the Menti code. The code is there on top and Shiva can be send it on the chat as well. Yes. Sorry everybody that we started about a minute or two late. It's just because we were getting it set up after Saurabh Sir's class. So it took a little bit of while. But thank you so much for being such amazing students as always, right? So how excited are we? Have we revised all of our chapters? Did you go through all of your chapters once? Because we've been doing it consistently for both class 9 and 10. And especially for you 10th graders. We have already done for maths. We've done it for physics, chemistry. And last but not the least, we're doing it for biology. So so you had a full end-to-end -end syllabus revision, right? Yes. Hello, Giridhar. Hello, Aida. Anshul. Josh is hi. Lakshit is here. Very good. Very good. I know. Yes. So we're going to get started very soon. I hope all of you are joining quickly for everyone out there. The code is 83500927. Yes. And I hope that you've shared this video link with all of your friends. This will definitely come handy for all of you. So here's a quick set of rules and I'm going to get started, okay? Today we're going to have a total of 50 questions. Understand that. 50 top biology questions. And what we have done is we have broken it down into three rounds. So the first round will have 20 questions which will have easy ones. Then you have the next set of 20 with the moderate level. And the last 10 are going to be some slightly tough ones, yes? So I hope all of you are ready and excited. All right. Okay. So now, of course, in the meanwhile, as you join, here's a quick reminder. If you have any siblings or you have cousins, brothers, you know, friends, you know, siblings who are there who might be struggling with English, please make sure that you recommend the Baiju Spoken English program for them. It's available till class 4 to 9. And of course, you have Cambridge certified teachers. It helps you with confidence in public speaking. And of course, do not worry. It's a two-month program. It is paid, but nonetheless, it will be helpful. Of course, everybody, as you know, right, Baiju's 9 and 10 channel is where you will find everything. And as you know, we've started getting very aggressive with your board preparation. We want to make sure that you have complete revision, you have good practice. We're making you do a lot of questions. We have PYQs coming very soon from Monday. Along with that, we will be having, you know, critical questions, MCQ crushers. We will be doing, you know, so much more on the channel, right? So if you've not subscribed to our channel, even now, now is the time that you subscribe because, see, as a part of our Jeet Ka Josh, you know that we've started becoming serious, right? So please make sure that if you are as serious about your board preparation as we are, then you have to subscribe, right? Because all of us here, all of us teachers are putting in our heart and soul in making sure that all our students do extremely well in the exam. Yes? All right. So now, of course, everyone, it is time for round one. So I hope all of you have started. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All of you who are here, a very warm welcome. If you've just come and if you are new to our channel, I'm Aishwarya, mainly a biology expert, and I help you out with SSD as well, right? Yes, I can see that a lot of you are here. And let's see. Question number one out of 50. So how many participants do I have? Yes, yeah, thank you Anshul for sending the code for all of our friends. Shiva, can we please keep sending the code? Okay, all right. Yes, yes, I will give you time to write your names. Don't worry. Of course, only 75 avatars that we are able to see. 94, 95. This number needs to hit 200 today, okay? 200 live learners we need, 200 people that we are going to be practicing our biology with. Yes. All right, everybody. Okay, so are we ready? And I hope all of you have liked the video. I can see around 100 students, but I see very few likes on the channel. So in the meanwhile, as you write your names, please make sure that you like this video, right? Do not forget to like it. Do not forget to subscribe. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Very good, everybody. Very good. So let's get started. Question number one on your screens. Yes. What are the products obtained by anaerobic respiration in plants? Okay. Lactic acid plus energy, carbon dioxide plus water plus energy, ethanol, carbon dioxide plus energy, or pyruvate. We are talking about anaerobic respiration in plants. It's a little bit of a trick question, but I'm sure you will be able to answer. Yes? For those of you who are very new and maybe you are coming for the first class with me, my name is Aishwarya, mainly a biology teacher. Yes? All right, let's see the answer. Very good, everybody. Very, very good. Now, I can see some of you got confused here, right? We're talking about anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic, as we know, is the respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen, right? Or there's not enough oxygen. Now, most often they're not in plants. And of course, in the case of yeast, what we see is that anaerobic respiration takes place where ethanol is produced. And whenever ethanol is there, we know that, of course, anaerobic respiration takes place with incomplete breakdown of glucose, right? That means ethanol is there, which is a two-carbon molecule. And then, of course, you have carbon dioxide and then you have energy. But of course, very less energy will be produced. Yes? What is pyruvate? Pyruvate is a compound wherein first in the cytoplasm, glucose will get broken down into pyruvate. And this pyruvate is either then taken into the mitochondria for aerobic respiration or of course in the case of anaerobic, this pyruvate is what will be in broken down further. Yes? Okay, so some of you are saying, ma'am, sound is not good. Are we facing issues with sound? Everyone, are we facing issues with sound? Can you quickly give me a thumbs up? Ma'am, please fix the mic. Uh, Shiva, can we check? Shiva, now we facing issues. Okay, so I think a lot of you are saying, ma'am, no, ma'am. Sound issues are there. So for most of you, I'm thinking that there is no sound issues. But if you are facing sound issues, it could be with respect to your device. Just log out of YouTube and come back once again. It will be fine. Okay, ma'am, sound is clear. Everything is fine. Good to go. Moving on to question number two. Yes? On your screens, everyone, question number two, go to Menti. Don't tell me, ma'am, I didn't get time to write your name, right? Yes, if there's a sound problem, it's my throat. I'm not well, okay? I have a sore throat, so that's why. Okay, so now moving on to question number two. Yes, on your screens. Harshita, I will get back to your question, okay? In which plant hormone, which plant hormone promotes dormancy in seeds and buds? Okay, is it auxin, is it gibberellin, cytokinin or abscisic acid, right? So all of you answer and in the meanwhile for Harshita who is asking me ma'am, why not lactic acid? Lactic acid is something that is formed in our bodies, right? Incomplete breakdown of glucose or anaerobic respiration in our body in the skeletal muscles, lactic acid is formed, okay? Alright, let's see the answer. And well done. But I can see that a lot of you have gotten confused once again. Okay. Now, everybody out there who answered cytokinin, gibberellin, auxin. What was your thought process? I want to know. Okay. What happened here, everyone? <coughs> okay. Don't trust on chat. Ha, chat par bharosa mat karo. What do we mean by dormancy, ma'am? We did not understand. Okay. See, when we say dormancy, it means it's getting dormant, inactivated, right? So, here we're saying which plant hormone is responsible for promoting dormancy in seeds? That means we know seeds will germinate, right? And we have some hormones that promote this. But which is responsible for causing dormancy in these seeds? And buds. That means it will not let it do its job of germinating or blooming. Now, normally when does a seed become dormant or when does a bud become dormant? It becomes dormant when there is stress or there is unfavorable conditions, right? So, abscisic acid is the stress hormone that is responsible for it, right? And... <clears throat> When we talk about gibberellin, gibberellin is the hormone that is responsible for promoting seed germination. Cytokinin is responsible for promoting cell division, right? And auxin again is responsible for promoting cell elongation. So in all these cases, these are good, 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 all promoting growth, 
बट एप्सिसिक एसिड और ए बी एज द स्ट्रेस हॉर्मोन एंड इट प्रमोट डॉर्मेंसी ऑल्सो अलाउज फॉर वट यू से इट ऑल्सो कॉज नॉट इट प्रमोट डॉर्मेंसी एंड इट ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सेनेसेंस एंड एजिंग राइट so are we clear everyone are we clear yes okay now let's move on to the next one on your screens everybody question number 3 Ma'am, what do we mean by dormancy? Dormancy is is when it gets inactivated, right? It's dormant, does not do its function. Okay? Yes. All right, everybody is here. I hope you've written your names. Let's go to the question, right? A microscopic gap that is present between a pair of adjacent neurons, which in over which nerve impulses pass through, is called as what? Neurotransmitter, dendrite, axon, or synapse? Trust me, this is a very direct and easy question, right? So it's going to be super easy. I know, ma'am, this is so easy. What is this even? Three more seconds, and yes, okay, very good. Well done. One hundred nineteen of you have got this answer. The fine gap that exists between two, the axonal end of one neuron and the dendritic end of the other neuron through which nerve impulses are passed, is called as synapse. Well done. Moving on to question number four. All right, on your screens, everyone. Question number four. Yes, yes. Leaderboard will come after a good number of questions. I think it's actually coming much later, but nonetheless, let's see. I think it comes after the fifth question. I'll have to check. Which among the following is not the function of testis at puberty? Okay, we are talking about function of testis, formation of germ cells, secretion of testosterone, development of placenta, secretion of estrogen. Which among the following is not the function of testis at puberty? Yes. Okay. All right, ma'am. I think the team has already made put the leaderboard, so that's why I'm not sure where exactly they have put it. But nonetheless, let's hope that it's after every five questions. Otherwise, worst case, it might come after every twenty questions. Okay. Very good, everybody. Very good. So you, most of you have got the answer correctly. We know that testis is nothing but the main reproductive organ in uh, human males, right? And we know that testis being the main reproductive organ or the reproductive, you know, the male gonad. We know that they are responsible for producing the germ cell or the reproductive cell or the male gamete, which is the sperm. They are also responsible for secreting the sex hormone, which is testosterone. But it's not their job for development of placenta or secretion of estrogen because these are two things we observe in the female body. Yes. All right. Now moving on to the next one, right? Question number five. Okay, ma'am. Point table, please. Point table leaderboard will come. I'm hoping it's coming after every five questions. So let's see after this question if it comes or no. Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you've all entered. For those of you who have just joined us, go to www.menti.com. Code is on top here. Eight three five zero zero nine two seven. Okay. And let's have a look on the question. Which among the following is a function of a contraceptive? Okay, very important. Prevents pregnancy to a large extent, allows family planning, prevents sexually transmitted diseases, or is it all of the above? Which among the following is or are the functions of contraceptives? Yes, everyone. Very quickly, I hope all of you are answering. I can see a lot of other conversations happening on the chat. Please stay focused. Okay, times up. Well done, everybody. Well done. Most of you have gotten this answer correctly. Now, see for others who have marked these three options, you are not wrong. 
right? But you are only partially correct. Because here if you see prevents pregnancy to a large extent, exactly, it, it acts, it prevents unwanted pregnancies, right? And also prevents the transfer of sexually transmitted diseases. And this in turn allows family planning, which is why the correct answer here is all of the above. So I hope that all of you are marking this correctly because see, reproductive health, contraception is a very important topic. There are chances that questions can come in your boards, okay? All right. So yes, leaderboard will come only after some time. So you might have to be patient with the leaderboard for now. But nonetheless, are we clear everybody? Yes. Ma'am, but all contraceptives does not prevent. Yes, all contraceptives do not prevent a sexually transmitted diseases. But it's one of the functions, right? So if we use barrier method, they do prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Yes. Okay. All right. So yes, our moderator, Chotu Sabacha, I need you to stay focused. Okay. Are we clear? Any doubts so far? Anybody has any doubts? I hope that it is all clear. Right. All right. So now moving on to question number six. Answer fast to get more points. Right. The inner lining of the stomach is protected by one of the following from hydrochloric acid. Choose which one. Is it mucus, salivary amylase, pepsin or bile? Okay. Ma'am, no, ma'am, no. Okay. Leaderboard. Yes. Okay. A lot of you are giving me the answers and I can see some doubts which I would like to take about contraceptives. I will take after this question. Okay. See, now I will not be able to do anything about leaderboard. The mentee has been made. So, all of you please be a little patient with me. Right? Very good. This question was there to kind of confuse you, but all of you got the answer here. So, well done. So, now two questions which I want to answer is, what are gonads? See, gonads are nothing but reproductive organs or the main reproductive organ. So, male gonad is testis, female gonad is nothing but ovary, right? Second question is, ma'am, how does it help in point two? How do contraceptives help in family planning? Which means that it helps in family planning by preventing unwanted pregnancies, right? So making sure that if a family decides to have only two children, then they will be able to do so by making sure that they use contraceptives, right? It will not, it will prevent any unwanted pregnancies further. So that is what, that is how they prevent it, okay? Yes, all right, Dev, uh, Devishi, I hope I've given you the answer to this, right? Yes, what is placenta, disc-like structure that is there which provides nutrition to the growing fetus? All right, and yes, a lot of unnecessary conversation happening in the chat. You do know that you will get timed out, no? So, guys, please don't. Those who just joined the chat, go to the code menti.com, press the code 83500927. Yes, all right, everyone. So, very quickly, I hope question number seven is there on your screens. All right, let's have a look. Why carrying out the starch test on a leaf, why is it important to boil the leaf in alcohol? Is it to dissolve the waxy cuticle? Is it to make the cells more permeable to iodine solution? Is it to remove the chlorophyll? Or is it to stop chemical reactions in the cell? Yes? Everyone, question based on leaf experiment on photosynthesis on your screen. <coughs> Okay, I can see that a lot of you have gotten confused with this, right? So now whenever we do photosynthesis or experiments based on photosynthesis, right? What is the one thing that we do? We make sure that we do a de-starching experiment where we keep the plant or the potted plant in 48 hours in the dark, right? And after that, what do we do? We boil it in alcohol. And why do we do that? To decolorize it or to remove the chlorophyll. This does not help in making it more permeable to iodine solution, right? And neither does this stop any chemical reactions, yes? Main thing is for decolorizing, which is why the correct answer here is option C. So those of you who got confused with this, I hope that it is clear. Ma'am, is this for to test chlorophyll? No, they mentioned in the question, this is for starch test, right? That's why we are doing this. So I hope that it is clear. What is inside chromosomes? Chromosomes are made by the uh, highly coiled DNA, right? Which means it's made up of DNA and histone proteins. Yes? Okay. 
मैम इसी का एक्सपेरिमेंट मैंने आज देखा अमेजिंग अमेजिंग राइट ऑल राइट वेरी गुड फॉर दोस्ट यू आर राइटिंग दिस ऑन योर नोटबुक well done okay so this will of course help you recap all of your chapters all right ma'am question um all right so let's go ahead and go to question number 8 and for those of you giving pre boards you have my blessings you will do well let's have a look at question number 8 an indoor potted plant bends in the direction of the window when it grows this phenomenon is an example of what is it chemotropism geotropism phototropism or hydrotropism what do you think is the answer ma'am what is histone histone is nothing but a protein through which the uh, dna is bound okay devishi whatever doubts you have please send it in the chat i'll try my best to answer all right everybody time is almost up Okay, well done, everybody. Well done. I can see that one fifty three of you have got this right. Now, see here, we're talking about an indoor potted plant, right? That is bending in the direction of the window. Yes, that means that bending is happening towards the light. And if it is towards the light, it is tropic movement, and it is with respect to light as the stimuli, which is why it is phototropism, right? Yes, ma'am. Vaccine cuticle can also be the answer, right? See it can, but but what is the primary role of it is to decolorize it, right? So everything the main focus should be on what is the main intent. That is why the answer will be alcohol. Okay, all right. Now let's move on to the next question. Yes, question number nine. Okay, yes, yes. For those of you who are like, ma'am, fast, fast, fast. We will do it fast. Don't worry. We are all here. No, so we'll do it. So let's have a look, everyone. Answer fast to get more points. Yes. In a synapse, chemical signal is transmitted from where to where? From axonal end of the cell of the body to the same neuron, cell body to axonal end, dendritic end of one neuron and axonal end, axonal end of one neuron and dendritic end. Pay attention to the options. Okay, this is there to trick you. Okay, ma'am. What is neuromuscular junction? My uncle will explain it here. I will explain this point right here because I did see your question on this, so I will definitely answer. Well done, everybody. Well done. But I knew it. Some of you will get confused here. See, we are talking about chemical signal, right? So electrical impulse will come from where? We know that it's going to be coming all the way from dendritic end. Will receive it. It will go through cell body. Then it will go through axon, reach the axonal end, right? Now at the axonal end there is a synapse, right? Where the dendrit dendritic end will start. Now at the synapse is where the chemical signal will go. So axonal end of one neuron and then to the dendritic end of the other neuron. So we are talking about chemical signal. So I hope all of you are clear. Yes. So this is super super important because most often than not you get confused, which is why I am going to just quickly show you this. And for those of you who ask me, what is neuromuscular junction? Neuromuscular junction is when the axonal end is here. There is a synapse, and right here is the muscle. Right. So this part right here is the neuromuscular junction. So correct answer is option D. So are we clear, everybody? Are we clear? All right, ma'am. Leaderboard might come a little later. I know all of you are sad about leaderboard coming late. We will let the team know. Team has added it. I think after twenty questions, after round one is when the leaderboard will come. Okay. So very very sorry, ma'am. Sunflower is an example of photonasty or phototropism. To be honest, sunflower is actually an example of heliotropism. Okay. So heliotropism is the movement that we see in sunflower where they move along with the direction of the sun. Okay. But phototrop, not photonasty. It will not be photonasty. All right. Okay. Now moving on to question number ten. Everybody is here. Question number ten, and let's see what the question is. Okay. Given the missing term, so you have an image on screen. You have stimulus, receptor, sensory neuron, something, motor neuron, effector, response, spinal cord, brain, cranial nerves, relay nerves. <coughs> I 
I'm not ignoring anybody here. I have so many kids in my class, so that is probably why, of course, it's taking me some time to me. I may be missing out on your questions, but of course, not ignoring anyone. All right. So after the tenth question, I will take two, three doubts because I can see that quite a bit of you are are having this doubt. Well done, everyone. Well done. See here, I'll tell you one thing. Okay. To be honest, if you see. Those of you who marked brain are not technically wrong, right? Because nobody has told you what is the stimulus, right? So if the stimulus is something to do with your eyes, or if it's a light stimulus, or maybe an auditory stimulus, it could easily be your brain. So technically, that answer should be central nervous system, okay? The, in the missing black. But most often than not, because most reflexes that are there are controlled by the spinal cord, we will go with spinal cord, right? But brain in itself, because in that question it's a little vague. That is why even brain I will be half accepting, but mainly answer is spinal cord, right? Cranial nerves, no, right? And neither it will be relay nerves, right? So the correct answer is between these two. Why not relay neuron? It is see again. If it was relay neuron here, they have said relay nerves, right? Understand the difference. We're talking about relay nerves. We know that nerves are of three kinds, right? So we know that nerves are either sensory nerve, motor nerve, and mixed nerve. Yes, it's not relay neuron. Understand that difference, okay? Ma'am, your dialogue is to be honest, right? My biology teacher also has same dialogue. Yes. I have the dialogue. Always be honest. If you don't know, you don't know, right? All right, ma'am. Spinal cord controls reflex actions. Spinal cord controls most reflex actions. There are some which are controlled by the brain also, right? Ma'am, what are relay nerves? Okay, relay nerves that are there. See, again, relay neurons are there, or interneurons are there, or association neurons are there, right? That is the main thing. Relay nerves are there to confuse you, right? It is there to confuse you. Okay, motor neuron was already there in the question. Exactly, it was already there. All right, somatic cells are all the cells, the body cells that are there inside our body. Yes. Okay, what are glands? Glands are nothing but a group of cells, right, which have the ability to secrete a certain substance. All right. Okay. Relay neuron is the communication between sensory and motor. Yes, it is. You are correct. All right, ma'am. How much time is will this session take? This class will go on for two hours, right? So coming up front with you, it will take two hours. Now moving on to question number eleven, everyone. Okay. Yes, Raghav, I will give you the difference in just a bit. All right. How many questions are there? So many more. We are in the eleventh question. Everyone on your screens. Question number eleven. I U C D is for what? Is it for vegetative propagation, contraception, increasing fertility, avoiding miscarriage? This is again a very direct question. And for those of you who are very new and maybe you are seeing me for the first time, I'm Aishwarya and I teach biology, right? And everybody, in the meanwhile, if you've liked the video, make sure that you like it because I can see that a lot of you are here. Very few likes on this video, okay? Very, very few. Only eighty likes. What is this? We need to target two hundred likes today. Yes. <laughs> very good, everybody. Very, very good. Correct answer here is option D, contraception. Very quickly, can you tell me what is the full form of IUCD in the chat? What is the full form of IUCD? Very good. Enter you try and contraceptive device. Answer is there in the question itself, right? It does not help in avoiding a miscarriage. Neither does it help in increasing fertility. But acts as a contraceptive. And in the chat, give me a quick example, right? Quick example of an IUCD that is there. Give me an example in the chat. Very quickly, everyone, give me an example. Yes, copper tea. Very good. Copper tea is an example. Yes, very good. Now let's move on to question number twelve. Diaphragm is not an example of IUCD. It's an example of um mechanical barrier <clears throat> yes okay all right everyone question number 12 yes on your screens the correct sequence of organs in the male reproductive system for transport of sperms is dash 
Testis vas deferens urethra. Testis ureter vas deferens. Testis urethra ureter. Testis vas deferens and ureter. What do you think is the correct answer? Reproduction padenge. Reproduction has already been covered on the channel. You can check it out. Right? Now for those of you who are asking me ma'am what is contraceptive? Contraception is nothing but the act of preventing pregnancy. Right? This should be an easy one. Very good everybody, very good. So here, I think where you got confused is between urethra and ureter. Ureter is what? <coughs> ureter is nothing but a device, right? So we see that ureter is nothing but a tube that transports um, urine from kidney to urinary bladder. You, vas deferens has no connection to ureter, right? But it does have a connection to urethra, which is why this is the correct answer, okay? So, I hope we are clear with this, everyone. <coughs> for Ifham who is asking me this, they will adopt, right? For other couples who are there, they will adopt kids if they don't have the ability. Yes? How many types of contraceptive methods are there? There are four types of contraceptive methods, right? Yes, ureter doesn't come in the picture only. Now, let's move on to question number 13. Okay, everyone, question number 13. What are somatic cells? Somatic cells are the normal cells of our body, right? Skin cells, blood cells, they are all somatic cells. Gametes are the reproductive cells, okay? ITC, I have already answered your question. Question number 13, everyone, on your screen. The ratio of number of chromosomes in a human zygote and a human sperm is dash. 2 is to 1, 3 is to 1, 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3. Okay, <clears throat> what is neuron? Neuron is nothing but the structural and functional unit of the nervous system, right? So that is what we mean by neuron. Yes, this is a hard one. Okay, well done everybody, well done. See, this was a trick question, right? So we are talking about the number of chromosomes in a human zygote, right? So, we are talking about zygote is to sperm or another way of writing this is zygote is to gamete, right? So, zygote is formed by the fusion of gamete. That means zygote will have 46 chromosomes, right? Gamete has only half the number of chromosomes. They will have 23 or it is diploid and that is haploid, which means if you cut this and this, it will be 2 is to 1. Not to get confused like how most of you have gotten confused with 1 is to 2. Answer is 2 is to 1. So are we clear with why it is 2 is to 1? Yes. Now for those of you who might have exams tomorrow and who are preparing for your exams, this session will go on till 9, 9.30. So I'm just letting you know beforehand itself. Okay. So are we clear? All right. So now let's move on to the next question. Question number 14. Yes. Question number 14 on your screens and let's see what the question is. Okay, Mendel conducted his famous breeding experiments by working on which plant? So easy, all of you should be getting the answer. Whoops, one second. Okay, I think there's some glitch with menti, so let's just maybe quickly move ahead to this. All right. Yes, Mendel conducted his famous breeding experiments on which plant? Look at your phone. Options are Drosophila, Escherichia coli, Pythium sativum or all of these. This is so easy, so, so easy. For those of you who want to know, right, how to join, go to www.menti.com to 83500927, yes? If you want to study maths, Piyush, you can always study maths tomorrow and day. Day after Kushbu Mam will be there to help you out with it. But for now, let's study some biology, right? Very good, everybody. Very good. The answer is very easy because Mendel conducted his famous experiments on pea plants, right? And the scientific name of pea is Physum sativa. All right. Now, moving on to question number 15. And after five more questions, you will have your leaderboard, right? Yes. Okay. 
Now let's have a look everyone. See, leaderboard will come after the 20th question. So please, please wait for it. All right. Yes, very good. Thank you, Arya. Thank you so much. Now moving on to the next question, right? A zygote which has an X chromosome inherited from the father will develop into what? A boy, a girl, a girl. X chromosome does not determine the sex of the child or either boy or girl. See, this is a very, very easy question, right? This should be super easy and I can see that a lot of spamming is happening. Our chat moderator will time you out. So guys, please be careful. Don't get timed out. Well done everybody. Well done. The correct answer here is option B girl. Because we know that the X chromosome is coming from the father. And we know that sperms are responsible for sex determination, right? Because sperms can either have X chromosome or it can have Y chromosome. And we know that all eggs will have X chromosome. So based on which sex chromosome is present in the sperm, it can either be XX or XY, right? So are we clear with this concept, everyone, on sex determination? It is very simple, right? Yes, Aji Pada hai ma'am. Abhi to aapka practice bhi ho gaya, right? All right, so now moving on to the next question, question number 16, yes? Question number 16 on your screen. See, I told you the first 20 questions are easy questions. Then we will move on to some tough ones and then even more, right? Okay, so on your screens, this is all warm-up questions for you. The decomposers in an ecosystem do what? What is the role of decomposers? A grasshopper feeding a leaf is... You know, you need to figure out which is a decomposer, right? So here we have rainwater running into, um, you know, into the lake, earthworm making a burrow in the soil, a mouse fighting with another mouse for food. Okay. Decomposers in an ecosystem, what is responsible for decomposing or feeding on some dead and decaying organisms, breaking it down into finer components, right? Very good, everybody. Very good. See, here a grasshopper feeding on a leaf. This is a consumer, right? And here rainwater running down into a lake. That has nothing to do with any kind of trophic level. Mouse fighting with another mouse for food. This is again not an interaction. This is, this is an interaction, but it's a competition, right? Not part of any food chain. Earthworm making a burrow in the soil. As an earthworm makes the burrow, it also feeds on it. And it's, of course, a decomposer in an ecosystem, right? All right, okay. This is which question from our chapter? Our environment. It is from our environment, right? So here's the earthworms. What do they do? They feed on some microscopic particles, maybe some, you know, organic matter. They break it down internally and they whatever, whatever is there, they excrete it out, right? So that's a decomposer that is there. So now question number 17, everyone. Okay, which of the following are environmental friendly practices, right? For those of you who have not done our environment, some practice will be here for you. Carrying a cloth bag to put purchase in uh, purchases in while shopping, switching off lights unnecessarily, walking to school instead of taking out, taking, helping, uh, making your mother take the scooter, or is it all of the above? Even if you have not studied our environment chapter, this should be an easy one, right? Ma'am, round one may 20 questions hai? Yes, there are 20 questions in round one. Yes. Okay, everybody. Well done. The answer is all of the above, right? Because when we talk about environmental friendly practices, switching off lights unnecessarily also reduces consumption of electricity. And of course, for producing electricity, there's a lot of demand, right? And we know that that also generates pollution. Here, of course, you know, walking to school instead of taking, letting your mother take the scooter. Scooter, of course, has a lot of emissions that are there, which can, of course, cause air pollution, right? So the correct answer here is option D. I know, halwa question, very easy. Now let's have a look at question number 18, everybody. Question number 18, yes? On your screens, let's have a look. Which of the following is a linear? This is, this is in Ankita ma'am's words, Kaju Katli question. In which of the following uh, is a linear arrangement of organisms? Food chain, food web, trophic levels or community? 
There is a place where you will get confused. One place I know you can get confused thinking, oh ma'am, it could be that. Don't overcomplicate the question and you will be easy. Okay? Seven more seconds everybody. Seven more seconds and we will be done. Ha, exactly Amrita. I know that my students will con get confused between the two. But well done. Well done. See, for those of you who I saw Amrita's comment who said, ma'am, you know, uh, I got confused between A and C. See, the thing is they're saying the following is a linear arrangement, right? So, they're talking about the whole arrangement. That is the food chain. What is a food web? Many interconnected food chains will make your food web, right? And in a food chain, each level that is there, your producers, your consumers, your decomposers, each level is what we call as a trophic level. Our, if trophic level cannot be a linear arrangement, okay? Linear arrangement includes these trophic levels, which is why your answer is food chain. So for those of you who are ready with food chain or were confused with trophic level as the answer, are we clear now? Are we clear everybody as to why this cannot be the answer? Yes, okay, exactly. Hashtag Kaju Katri question, very good. Mom, is it okay to join Menti? Of course, join Menti. You are never late. We have so many questions. 50 questions to be done. We are still in question number 18. Good number of 30 questions to go once again. Right? Join, join, join. Code is there on top. 83500927. So go ahead and join. Right? Is evolution deleted? Yes. Evolution is now deleted from your syllabus, which is why we don't have any questions from that. All right, let's have a look everyone and let's see the answer, right? In peas, a pure tall plant is crossed with a pure short plant. The ratio of pure tall to pure short in F2 will be what? Understand, this is parental generation. This is F2. What is the answer of pure tall is to pure short? Everyone, very quickly in the chat, I mean, in your mentee platform, I mean. Leaderboard will come, leaderboard will come. Oh, oh. What happened, guys? What happened? Where did we go wrong? What happened? Ma'am, doubt ho gaya? Confusion ho gaya? Yes. Ma'am, these are tricky. For what I know, I really feel like I have done this question once. Okay? I will see how you need to think about it. Right? What have they told us? Let me just put it on top. So, they told us that a pure tall plant, okay, is crossed with a dwarf plant. Right? And they are telling that what is the ratio of this pure tall is to pure dwarf. So, tall and dwarf, right? So, what is the ratio of this in F2? That means, what are your gametes here? Your gametes here are T and here it is T, right? So, in your F1 generation, what will you get? In F1 generation, when you cross it and you do the punnett square, you will get everything as in heterozygous condition, right? That means, in F1, all are tall plants, okay? Now, what will happen? How do you get F2? You cross F1 or you self-pollinate on selfing, right? What are we going to do next? We are going to take this and this, right? So, let's draw our unit square. So, on drawing this, we will get, just a minute. So, these are our gametes, no? Gametes, which are here. And now, when we do the cross thing, okay? So now when we do the cross thing, we get one here and then we have two in heterozygous and one dwarf plant. So you get three tall and one dwarf. But in this, how many are pure tall? How many are pure tall plant here? There's only one pure tall, right? And how many are pure dwarf? There is only one. So the ratio in F2 is only one is to one. Are we clear with why it is one is to one? Everybody... Are we clear as to why the answer is 1 is to 1? Ma'am, I didn't understand the question. Exactly, ma'am. Jaldi mein galat ho gaya. Exactly. See, heredity numericals. Learn. Read the question. Yes? Very good. Very good. Yes, ma'am. It is all clear. Amazing. So, now we know why it is 1 is to 1, no? 
if they had asked you if the question was the ratio of tall to short plants right in f2 generation then what will be the answer if it is tall to short then the correct answer here is 3 is to 1 but because the word pure is there we are talking about homozygous condition okay all right, very good everybody, very, very good. Yes, well done, 3 is to 1. Ma'am, could you do Punit square for F1 generation once again? See, in F1 I didn't do it because if you see, right, your gametes for F1. So here, for those of you who are asking me, because I know this is a little tricky for you, here you will have this and here you will have this, right? These are your gametes, yes? So what will you get? All of them will come in heterozygous condition. Okay, all of them are heterozygous condition. That is why you will be selving. I mean, when you're selfing it, it will be between these two. Yeah. Okay. Hindi mein boli hai. Aap sabko pata hai ki main Hindi hai. Abhi still improvement mein hai. Jo bhi concept aapko nahi samajh mein aa raha hai, wo main Hindi mein bataungi. Varna aap bhi thoda thoda comfortable ho jaiye ki main English mein bataungi taaki jab aap exam likhoge, your English will be fluent. The end of the day, you have to write in English, no, and your phrasing, your words, they need to be proper. That is why you need to be careful, okay? Yes. Question number 20, everybody. Question number 20, yes? Okay, on your screens, hope all of you are all on menti. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm fast to get some more points. Oh, easy one. What is the temperature of the scrotum in the male reproductive system, okay? 2-3 degrees lower than that of body temperature, 2-3 degrees higher, 4-5 degrees lower, 4-5 degrees higher. What do you think is the correct answer? Yes. Queen of whole world, what happened? You're saying, ma'am, you also cooperate. What do you want me to do? I will do that. I will also cooperate, right? Yes. All right, everybody, please tell me. What is it that you want, queen of whole world? I'll help you out. Very good, very good. Very proud of all of you. You got the answer. We know that the sperms, I mean, uh, when we talk about the testis, testis is extra abdominal or it does, it's not part inside the body, but it actually hangs outside the body and it is found, it is protected by the scrotum, which is a layer of, it's a sac-like structure, right? And we know that the reason behind it is because sperms require, a, uh, you know, a temperature which is slightly 2-3 degrees lower than that of the body temperature, right? Which is why we know that this is the temperature that is maintained. Yes. So are we ready for leaderboard everyone? Are we ready? So let's see what is the leaderboard after 20 questions. So we've had our first round of 20 questions. We've had a warm up. Let's see what it looks like. So I can see that Sri Hari PS is the fastest. I have Snuggles. Who is Blah? Please tell me. We have Mamata, Anshul, Snehal, Palai, Aina, the adorable, Shruti, Yakshet, Ritika and Ritwik. So I can see that all of you have made it. What about the others? Ma'am, 23rd place. Alright, 16th. Very good. Is it an NCRT? I think it's mentioned in NCRT, but nonetheless, like, even if we have, it's not mentioned, we have definitely taught it to you guys, right? 55th rank, 13, 25th, oh, I'm getting a lot of your ranks. Well done, everybody, well done. Now, how are you guys feeling? We looked at some easy questions from all the chapters, no? Are you able to recall some of the concepts? Are you able to, you know, immediately as you see the question, are you able to link it to which part of the chapter? How to go about it? Are you able to do that? Yes? Are we able to do it? How is the Josh also? I'm 109 but satisfied. Yes. Okay. Very good, very good. Yes, ma'am, definitely. Quite hard. Okay. Very interesting, ma'am. Bye. Okay, bye, Ronak. You can come back later. Ma'am, after every five questions, see, right now, I will not be able to change it because the team made it as per the round. So, I am very sorry for those of you who will keep telling me, ma'am, up five questions ke baad leaderboard la do. So, next time, we will keep it in mind, okay? Because right now, I think when the team made it, they had an idea that we will do it round-wise. But nonetheless, from next time, we will do it. Yes? Ma'am, Josh is down because of timeout. Are no problem. It's okay. You bring back the Josh, okay? 
मैं आपको डी एक्सप्लेन द लास्ट क्वेश्चन जरूर मैं एक्सप्लेन करूंगी सी व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द टेस्टिस राइट वी नो दैट टेस्टिस आर दोस ओवॉइड स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट आर देयर यस एंड वी नो दैट इट हैज द एपिडाइडम इज हियर नाउ बोथ द टेस्टिस दैट आर देयर नो we know that the testis is located extra abdominal or outside the body and it is protected by the scrotum now the reason why it is because when testis produce the sperms this requires a temperature 2 3 degrees lesser than our body temperature our body temperature is 37 degrees celsius but sperms require a slightly lower temperature to produce it right yes okay i want testis green in color no i am just using green in color for your reference right All right. So let me just quickly erase all of this out and keep some space for me so that I can get to the next set of questions. So everyone, how is the Josh for the next set of twenty questions? Are we ready? Are we ready to level up our game? Are we ready to be more, you know, tackle some more biology questions? Yes. Yeah? Quickly, chapter pe give me in the chat. Give me a lot of energy. Give me a lot of thumbs up. Thousand percent ready. That is what I exactly need, right? Yes. Let's get started. Okay. Awesome. So let's have a look at question number one. I mean, twenty one. But before I go ahead, I hope all of you have registered because Sarup Sir and I are coming live on Sunday at twelve thirty p.m. And you know we are coming up with this amazing webinar, okay, on how we can learn science the experiential way and how this will help us improve our marks. Right? It's a Akash webinar. I hope all of you have registered. If you have not, link is there in the description box. Yes. Okay. And yes, everybody. I hope all of you have liked. मैं देख रही हूँ 82 likes ही है and I have almost 170 kids on my live. Everyone, there needs to be more likes, right? And our aim is today 200, 300 likes. Yes. So Shiva, how many likes do we have on this video? Shiva, chat moderator is going to keep me updated at all times, right now. Okay. Make sure that you hit that like button. 132. 132 likes. I need 200 likes today. That is our aim. Yes. Yeah? All right. Very good. Very good. Ma'am, why is my rank 192 when there's 182 members? There are more on Menti, even though they're not there on live, right? So time for round two. Yes. Round two, everybody. Round two on your screens. Yes. Question number twenty-one, and let's have a look. Okay. The number of chromosomes in parents and offspring of a particular species remains constant due to what? Doubling of chromosomes after zygote formation, halving of chromosomes during gamete formation, doubling of chromosomes after gamete formation, or halving of chromosomes after gamete formation. Now, this is the this is easy, but the words are there to confuse you. I will tell you that up front. Okay. Words are here to confuse all of you. Do not get confused. Yes. Okay. Yes. A lot of you like, ma'am. B A. What is it? We are a little confused. All right, everybody. Okay. Very good. Very good. Times up. Well done. Okay, I am extremely proud of all of you, especially ninety-one of you who got it right. Now we are talking about the number of chromosomes in parents and offspring remain the same due to what reason? Now we know that parents are responsible for producing gametes, which are your reproductive cells. And during gamete formation, the chromosomes become half, or the number of chromosomes become half during gamete formation, not after. Right during the process of it, by the process of meiosis, it becomes half. Yes, doubling of chromosomes after. Where does it become double after that? Only during fusion, when fertilization takes place and two gametes come together, the number becomes double. No, and doubling of chromosomes after zygote formation. Number of chromosomes become double during zygote formation. Right? It is not after. It's not that zygote is formed, then number becomes double. So you understand how the terms during and after make a difference? Are we clear for those of you who marked this? Yes. What is gamete formation? Gamete formation is nothing but the formation of reproductive cells, right? And how does it happen? By meiotic division. What is meiotic division? It is also known as reductional divisions, where the number of chromosome becomes half. Yes. Okay. 
Ma'am, send leaderboard after class and channel. Yes, of course, I will send it. Okay. All right. Ma'am, what are the important questions from this chapter? I will tell you. Uh, any, any of you who have doubts so far? Because some of you are like, ma'am, I'm having some doubts. So, yes. Sorry for spamming, ma'am. Yes. No problem. But please don't spam everybody. If you get the, the digress with the conversation, you miss out on your board prep, right? And this all will help you with your board exams. So much you will be able to finish. Okay. Question number 22, everyone, on your screens. Yes. Which of the following is not the cause of diabetes in humans? Pancreas does not produ produce enough insulin. Body cannot effectively use insulin, uh, the use the insulin it produces. Insulin produced is used up differently by the body or all of the above. Now this is going to be, it's easy, but you should be able to recall what does insulin do. Okay, I'm just going to quickly set up the chat on my laptop as well. All right, everybody. All right. Let's have a look and let's see what the answer is. Ma'am, time consuming. Yes, I know. It is a little time consuming. It's not an easy one. I told you, no, next set of round two is going to be the tricky one. Okay. So here I can see what is diabetes. Diabetes is a condition where there is you know, not enough insulin produced or there is insulin resistance. And as a result, what happens is that the blood sugar levels are high, right? So we know that in diabetes, so in diabetes, we know that the blood sugar level is very high. Now, in this case, we see that there are one and two reasons why that would happen, right? So, we see that insulin is not produced enough, okay? So, sometimes the pancreas due to maybe some genetic conditions or maybe due to some viral attack, the pancreas will, pancreas will not produce insulin, right? And another condition where this could happen is mainly when you know that there is insulin resistance, right? Because of diet or maybe due to lifestyle, what will happen is that there is so much insulin in the body or there is so much of glucose or sugar in the body that even though how much ever insulin is produced, the cells will refuse to take up the glucose. They will say, no, I am done with glucose. I don't want glucose, right? But there is no case in which insulin can be used differently in the body, okay? Insulin has only one function that is to help the cells facilitate glucose uptake and convert excess glucose into glycogen, okay? So, are we clear with this, everybody? Are we clear with this? Yes? Ma'am, what is triple fusion? Triple fusion is seen in plants where one male gamete will fuse with the pen, right? It, I mean, it will fuse with the central cell or the secondary nucleus forming pen, which is primary endosperm nucleus. Yes? Okay. All right, everybody. Let's move on to the next question for those of you who got this wrong. Okay? All right. Now, moving on to question number 23 on your screens, everyone. Okay, a kid went to an amusement park and got up, went on a roller coaster. When he rode, when the ride started, he felt very anxious. Which hormone is responsible for this? Testosterone, thyroxine, uh, insulin or adrenaline? This is a very easy question, right? Most easy peasy, exactly. Now, for those of you who are asking me about history, geography and SSTC, today let's focus on science and biology. We'll have a separate class on it or towards the end of the class, I'll tell you how to go about it, okay? All right, everyone, all right. Obviously, D, ma'am, what is this? <laughs> you know the answer, I'm more than happy, right? If you are sure that it is D, then let's go for it. We're talking about what would happen when we feel anxious. Right? Yes. Okay. Well done, everybody. Well done. So, during these fight or flight situations, the stress hormone or adrenaline is released. Right? So, that was a very easy question. I know that most of you are sure. Um, I have a question from ovule uh, forming or... Uh, I have a question. Ovule forms seed or embryo? Ovule forms seed. Okay? It does not form embryo. Inside the zygote... <coughs> Sorry, everybody. The zygote that is there is what forms the embryo. Yes? 
No one is talking to me. I need you to stay focused in class, Aditi. Don't initiate other conversations. Yes? All right. Ma'am, what is diabetes? Diabetes is a condition where there is improved uh, increase in sugar levels. Next question is on your screen. Which of the following is not the function of the umbilical cord? I remember a lot of you had doubts when I was doing how do organisms ka subjective question. So I hope now it will be clear to all of you. Four options are here everybody. So please make sure that you see this. Um, for how to study history, like I said, I will do it towards the end or we'll have a separate class or Ankita ma'am will be taking it. Right? And of course, everybody, please make sure that you do not, uh, you hit that like button, right? And go to Menti if you have just joined. Okay. Now, some of you are finding my pace a little tough or it's a little fast. If you think that I'm talking too fast and you're not able to understand, there are two things. For whatever I have already covered, you can go back and reduce the speed and listen to the explanation, right? On YouTube, you'll be able to reduce the explanation. But in case for those of you who, from now on, when I'm explaining a concept where most of you have gotten it wrong, I go slowly, okay? Because I also understand that your time is valuable, so I don't also want to take too much of your time as well, right? Okay. Now, oh, all right, all right. Okay, so now I can see that most of you have got it correctly, right? That this is not the function. Guys, here, this bunch of you, you have heard, read the question as this, what is the function of umbilical cord? That is not what we are looking for. What is the umbilical cord? In the chat, tell me. What is the umbilical cord? I have spent some time explaining this very recently in a class, right? So, what is the umbilical cord? Everyone, in the chat, I need you to tell me. Very quickly, what is the umbilical cord? It's a cord. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a cord. But what cord is it exactly? All right. Okay. See, umbilical cord that is there is something that connects the placenta. Right? So, we see that it is something that connects the placenta to the embryo. Right? So, we see that this is what was connecting it to the embryo. Now, if it is connecting the placenta and the embryo, the umbilical cord is responsible for transporting nutrients from placenta or the maternal blood to the embryo. Also responsible for sending nutrients and oxygen, right? At the same time, it also takes back waste material, right? But it's not, it's not its job to keep the embryo in correct posture, right? That's not the role of the umbilical cord, which is why the correct answer here is option C. Yes? All right. Okay. So now let's move on to the next one, right? Next question, exactly the connection between the placenta and the mother through which blood nutrients. Very good, very good. Ma'am, are these things in the book? See, about placenta, you anyway have it, right? And they just say that umbilical cord connects the placenta to the baby. So, this is an indirect question that is there. Very indirect. They have not directly asked you function of placenta. Indirectly, they said what, does hap what happens through the umbilical cord. That's all, right? Oh, a lot of comments coming in. Amazing, amazing. Keep it going. And let's have a look at question number 25, everyone, on your screens. Oh, okay. In an ecosystem, the 10% of energy available for transfer from one trophic level to the next is in the form of what? Is it in the form of heat energy, light energy, chemical energy or mechanical energy? This place, I know you'll not get confused, but don't get confused, okay? Yes, all right. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for all the love that is coming in the chat. Thank you, Akash, please. Thank you. Yes. Everybody on your screen, what is the answer? Don't be spamming in that chat right now. Okay, everybody, in what form? See, 10% law, like today also, if you have attended my class earlier, I have told you that 10% law is very important from our environment. Very good. The correct answer is chemical energy and thank you for this, right? So, it is chemical energy, right? Because from one trophic level to the other, when the organism consumes it, right? So, imagine if I am an organism and I eat a plant, yes? So, I am consuming the chemical energy, yes? But we know that most often than not, a large amount of heat is, is emitted or large amount of heat is, energy is lost in the form of 
heat energy right so the correct answer is chemical energy because that's how energy is transferred through the chemical form so are we clear everybody are we clear ma'am how but right. this is very easy right okay i am disabling comments for now so now as i told you right when i go from one trophic level to the next trophic level right how is the energy going from here to here it is going in the form, I mean, consuming it is in the form of food, right? That means that whatever energy from the sun the producer does, or I mean, for example, this is the ener this energy from the sun, and we know that only 1% of that energy from the sun is actually stored, right? And here, what happens in plants? What is happening in plants? Plants are converting this solar energy into chemical energy. And all of this is stored where? It is stored in the form of food that is glucose or starch, right? And at the end of the day, we are always consuming food in the form of food. That means it's the chemical energy that is going. So are we clear everybody? Are we clear for people like Pork Place who's asking me, ma'am, how? How are you saying it is chemical energy? Are we clear? Yeah? Okay. Don't believe live chat. Yes. Don't believe it. Can be misleading. No? Okay. Ma'am, our teacher didn't take this lesson. Don't worry. Ankita ma'am has taken the lesson. So you will be able to check her video. Check her video out. It's there on our channel as well. So if you have not done our environment still and you want to do it, Ankita ma'am has already done it. You can check it out. Yes? All right. Question number 26, everybody. Ma'am, your voice is not audible to me. Please refresh your settings. You will be able to hear me. Okay? Yes, I'll explain once again. Don't worry, we have more questions to do, so not a problem. Okay, so this is an assertion reason question. Little bit scary questions coming. Mutation is the sudden change in which the genetic, uh, sudden change in the genetic material. Reason being that variation is useful for the survival of species over time. Which on the following is correct. This is not easy. Okay, I will tell you this, but trust me. The next set of questions from here, if you solve, I will tell you, you'll, you are pros at biology. I will tell you that. Pros, pros is what I would tell you. Okay, everybody, all right. So I can see that a lot of you are here and I can see the answers. You're like, ma'am, B or A. Don't worry, mark her low. Just mark it on menti and then we will deal with it. If you need an explanation, I will definitely explain. I'm not shying away from explaining it to you, no? I will definitely explain. Hmm. Good. Good number of you have got it right. 66 of you have got it right. What does the statement say? Mutation. Right? See, it, it might not be directly mentioned for you guys in your NCRT. Okay? NCRT may say this is an indirect question. And you can expect one or two questions to be indirect in your board sometimes. You never know. But it's our job to prepare you. You can't be like, ma'am, only easy questions will come in board exam. That's not the case, no. From our sample paper, we have understood that some one or two can be indirect. That's, our, that's why it's our job to prepare you for those questions. If you have seen all aspects of whatever kind of questions can come and you have it in your pocket and you have nothing to worry about, no. Don't think that, ma'am, without NCRT, I will not study. No, that should not be the attitude, right? So let's understand. Mutation is sudden change in genetic material. Okay. Modifications in the genetic material, it could be either while DNA copying, it could be, you know, maybe during some, D maybe during DNA repair or whatever happens, there might be some slight change, right? And this slight change can cause a mutation. That's a sudden change that happens. Or mutation could be due to maybe some chemical also. There are multiple reasons, right? And they're saying variation is useful for survival of species. Now, they're not saying all variations. Now, I have a question for you. If the reason said all variations is useful for the survival of species over time, will you say that this is the correct way of saying it? Can I say that all variations are useful? Yes or no? In the chat. Are all variations useful for the survival of species? No, right? But they said variations are useful, which means we can make do with this because they think some variations are useful for survival of species. Statement A is correct. Statement R is correct. But is this the correct explanation for A? No, right? It's not the correct explanation. Why does mutation happen? I told you it could be external factors. It could be internal factors. 
which is why the correct answer is option B. So I hope now you are clear. Mutations, if they accumulate, if they sustain, they lead to variations, okay? But that doesn't mean, that is not what is mentioned here. All right. No problem, no problem. Okay. So now let's have a look. Ma'am, I thought R was false. No, no. Ma'am, mutation is a sudden change? Yes. So we say that mutation is a sudden change, right? That's the easiest way of explaining it. Ma'am, are pre-board marks added to board exam internal marks? Internal marks. So pre-board marks most often, and this time around, if you see your internal marks mainly include all of your assignments and projects and all of that. Pre-board most often than not is not included. But pre-boards are necessary for prep, right? There's a very, I think one more question coming on this. Okay, decomposers in an ecosystem. Okay. Ah, decomposers in an ecosystem do what? I thought we might get the same question again. Convert organic material into inorganic. Convert inorganic into simpler. Convert inorganic into organic. Does not break down organic. What do they do? Yes? Yes, yes, I'll move faster. Don't worry, don't worry. For those of you who are getting very worried, ma'am, Going so slowly, don't worry. But there are going to be places where you will tell me, ma'am, what question did you just give me? Yes, everyone, very good. I can see some answers. Oh, what happened guys? What happened? Most of you said, ma'am, they convert inorganic material into simpler forms. Guys, what is decomposition? What do decomposers do? They break down organic material or they break down dead and decaying organisms. What are dead and decaying organisms? They are organic material, right? And what do they convert it into? Into simpler forms or the inorganic forms? The correct answer is option A. Are we clear? Everyone shocked. I rocked. Okay. Yes. Are we clear? For those of you who went wrong here. Yes. Ma'am, confused. See. Decomposers always think of the process of decomposition. Right? So, what is decomposition that is here? So, we know that in decomposition especially. Right? Where is my marker? Okay, yeah. So we know that in the case of decomposition, yes, it is nothing but a process wherein complex organic matter, okay, so here complex, I will add dead and decaying, okay, always remember decomposers act on dead and decaying organisms, right, and what do dead and decaying living organisms have? They are organic, right, remember this, and what will they break it down into? into simpler forms. If they are simpler, they will be inorganic, right? So, such as maybe in the form of nitrogen, I mean nitrogen, ammonia, all of that. I'm just giving you some examples, right? So, basically, it is the inorganic form, yes? So, I hope now we are clear. All right, simpler forms is option B. C, simpler forms, okay, but they're saying it's converting inorganic material. Is inorganic material correct? Can we say inorganic material? We cannot, right? If it said convert organic material into simpler forms, I agree. This is a correct answer. But read the fact that this thing inorganic. Decomposers act on dead and decaying organisms. So now are we clear? For those of you who said, ma'am, I got confused. Ma'am, pata tha, but confused ho gaya. Koi nahi. Okay, thank you for that, Amrita. Thank you so much, right? Okay. All right. Thank you for that, Amrita. Now, moving on to the next question, right, on your screens. Question number 28, yes? All right. Now, moving on to the next one. So, let's have a look. Okay, see, again, this is a Mendelian genetic question. Don't get confused. Don't rush with the answer, okay? Previous one, you rushed with it. Don't rush with this one. Tall pea plant is crossed with dwarf pea plant. Half of F1 progeny are dwarf. Find the genotype of the tall parent plant. Do not rush. You have time. Okay? Okay, everybody. All right. 
lot of you are saying ma'am a b a b all right very good everybody very quickly okay five more seconds and let's see the answer very good everybody very very good yes ma'am so less time i have not done i am afraid i have not done revision don't worry baba don't worry you still have time you have 3 months subscribe to our channel we are going to start off with revisions pyqs more question solving you do you will it will help you with revision right very good see most of you got this question correctly i liked how you all took your time and answered you were not in a hurry to find the answer but let's see this how to go about this particular question right so in this case maybe i will just remove i use this one all right let me quickly remove this bit and do the question for those of you who want me to do it i'm just doing it once very quickly okay i know you want me to go fast but with genetics i i will take my time and i will do it okay otherwise later on you will tell me mom you didn't explain that's why now what is given to us they said that there is a tall plant right and it was crossed with a dwarf plant that means we know the genotype of this it is t and t and what did they say after crossing at the end of it we see that half of them are dwarf right they are all dwarf that means they are short plants so what is the genotype of the tall one now one thing to understand is that if this is homozygous tall then if we do the punnett square right coming back to the punnett square if it is homozygous tall we should get something like this but we have not got that what did we get instead we got one wherein we see that there are two which are looking like this that means that the parent should be heterozygous tall and only then when we go in reverse we will get 50% of them as dwarf which is why it is heterozygous tall okay so for those of you who did not understand i hope it is clear explore are we clear are we clear with why the answer is oh, heterozygous tall are we clear everyone can you give me a thumbs up for those of you who are very confused very good okay crystal clear amazing moving on to question number ma'am no got it ma'am okay koi nahi for those of you who are i will repeat it once again all right don't worry in the meanwhile everyone question number 29 on your screen so go to menti write your names and after this after question number we have 10 more questions and then we will have the leaderboard right yes i will repeat it once again don't worry don't worry okay first we will do question number 29 and then i will go to that The manufacturing of chlorofluorocarbons free refrigerator what is mandatory throughout the world how does this help prevent ozone depletion you have four options from which you need to figure out the correct answer once we finish this question i'll explain the previous question once again don't worry yeah all right okay This is a very easy question, right, everyone? Super easy. You have enough time to answer this. To be honest, very good, very good. We know that chlorofluorocarbons are the ones that damage our ozone layer, right? And how do how do they damage this? Because we know that chlorofluorocarbons will react with the ozone molecules, and thereby we see that it disrupts the ozone molecules. But now in this case, if I stop making chlorofluorocarbons, uh, you know, make sure that I produce refrigerators that don't release these CFCs, then I know that this only will reduce the release of it. It will not reduce production of chlorofluorocarbons from oxygen molecules. Oxygen molecules are not producing the chlorofluorocarbons. Refrigerators are, right? This will help in converting CFCs into ozone molecules. 
No, because they are destroying ozone, right? This will help convert ozone in oxygen into ozone. No, no, this has nothing to do with it. How is oxygen becoming ozone? We know that because of the UV radiations, they split the oxygen molecules and these individual oxygen atoms will go and react with the molecular oxygen, thereby forming ozone, right? So these three are not the correct answer. Correct answer is option D, yeah? So for those of you who are confused, I hope you are e fine. All right, so for those of you, again, some of you are confused. I hope now you are clear, right? Royal Bhai Piyush, I have explained it. I hope now it is clear for you. Okay, I'll explain this once again. See, they're saying that they have, of late, people have told to be manufacturing CFC free. What is CFC? Chlorofluorocarbons, right? They told that you should not have CFC free. You should have refrigerators that don't release CFC. Now, what is the reason behind it? How does this help prevent ozone depletion? Now, CFC is a molecule that will react with ozone, okay? And if I produce a refrigerator that does not release CFC, then I can actually prevent ozone depletion because this will reduce release of CFC. That is how I am able to prevent ozone depletion. These three pointers have nothing to do with it, which is why the correct answer is option C, right? Okay. So now I hope you are clear with it, right? Now for those of you who wanted the previous question, no? For the previous question, what was given to us? There is a tall plant and there is a dwarf plant, okay? And at the end of F1 generation, we got 50% of dwarf plant, right? Now they are asking if I am getting 50% of dwarf plant, what is the genotype of my parent tall plant? Now we know that if the parent is homozygous tall, then the gamete we will get is this and this. And on crossing, we see that all four will have this genotype. That means that it is not homozygous tall. Now then let us try the next combination, which is heterozygous tall. Now when it is heterozygous tall and I cross it with the dwarf parent, I see that I am getting 50% of dwarf plants. That means that my correct answer or my genotype is capital T, small t. Okay. So I hope now both these questions are clear for all of you. Yes. Yes, yes. It's getting late, ma'am. Are you going? I'm helping you out only, no? But we also need to help our friends learn, right? So many of them have doubts. So we should also be helping them learn. So let's not rush the process as well. Tomorrow, you never next, if there's a question that you have a doubt in and what if your friends rush, then you will not learn, right? You will not be able to understand. Okay. So let's have a look at question number 13. All right. Oh, this is a little tricky one. Grass, grasshopper, frog, snake, hawk. If the amount of energy at the fourth trophic level is 5 kilojoules, what is the energy at producer level? Take your time with this. I will tell you only that. Take your time, don't rush, apply the 10% law. No problem, Shrishti, no problem at all. Ooh. Yes, okay, well done everybody, well done. I know, see, this is a simple calculation mistake, okay? Numbers are very simple. See, they said at the fourth trophic level, so one, two, three, four, at snake it is five kilojoules. So if it's five, this is 50, right? Go in reverse. Five, 50, 500, 5000. Because that's what they have asked at a producer level. So if it's only 5,000, then at each level, if you go, it is a 10% law, right? So just go back in reverse. Are we clear? Yes, by mistake, I took the fifth trophic level. So counting here is very important, right? They have clearly said it is at the fourth trophic level. So this was an easy question, right? And to be honest, it's a very simple kind of question that can come in your exams also, okay? Yes, this is a halwa question. Amazing. Okay, if it's halwa, then I'm happy, right? Question number 
but very quickly i hope you hit that like button i hope you subscribe to the channel because now you know right in 9th and 10th we take your board exam preparation very seriously so i hope that all of you have hit that like button yes shiva how many likes do we have 182 182 we need more likes we have to hit 200 likes today don't forget yes all right okay let's have a look identify x okay we have an image of the brain and you need to figure out if this is the thalamus the hypothalamus pons or corpus callosum everyone all be very very careful it's the tricky one because focus on where they are pointing and i know there is one answer i might get for sure but let me tell you that is there to confuse you that option i it's, it's sad that i'll not be able to bring this image back actually to show it to you very clearly on what exactly it is ma'am mid brain mid brain is not there in the option only yes yes I can see. See, I knew this part, right? I knew most of you will get this part wrong. And as a matter of fact, even the team has placed the options in such a way that all these parts are pons is not nearby. Okay, pons is where pons is far, far away. No. So for all of you, because brain, I know you will be like, "Ma'am, it's so tough. We are not able to understand what is this exactly." So I'm going to quickly take you through this. Okay. all right so now if you saw in the brain diagram they pointed at a structure here right so now i'm going to draw a very rough image of the brain because i don't have a lot of time right so i'm just going to do it see the thalamus part is what normally comes like this okay and we see that at the base of it you will find the pituitary gland so this portion that extends in this manner right that is your thalamus this part above it i mean this is the hypothalamus sorry this is the hypothalamus okay this portion always remember the portion that extends like this is the hypothalamus but here what extends this way is your thalamus all right and we know that thalamus acts as a relay center while your hypothalamus is responsible for you know regulating temperature controlling function of the pituitary gland and is also a center for pain as well right now on the other hand you also had another option which is corpus callosum So corpus callosum was that whitish structure that you saw here, right? This part which came on top, that was your corpus callosum, and it is a fibrous structure that is responsible for connecting the two cerebral hemispheres. Then you have pons, okay? Now pons is something which is part of the hind brain, all right? And we know that pons is responsible for regulating the breathing mechanism that is there, right? And of the respiratory mechanism. So now I hope we are clear with this, everybody. For those of you who got confused, are we clear? Yes. For a uh, uh, okay, ma'am. Uh, thalamus is receptacle. Thalamus uh, being a receptacle is in flower. Okay, that is different. This is thalamus, which is in our brain. Okay. All right, ma'am. Pons connects cerebrum and cell. Yes, it also acts as a relay center. Yes. Okay, very good, very good. Got it, ma'am. Amazing. So now, for those of you who got this wrong, I hope you are clear. Why it is not hypothalamus? Now, moving on to question number thirty-two on your screens, everybody. I hope all of you are here. All right. Okay. Nice drawing, ma'am. I hope that was a very bad drawing, but nonetheless, easy. Amount of energy that flows from one trophic level to another in the next uh, in a food chain is how much? Five, ten, twenty, fifteen. You already saw the question, which is based on the application, so I'm sure that you will be able to answer this. Well done. Okay, all right, everybody. A uh, leaderboard will come after I think fortieth question. So few more questions, and we'll have leaderboard. Okay, and we're almost done. If you see, we're almost around thirty to thirty-three, right? Now I'm sure all of you are feeling confident after this with the biology syllabus, and don't worry. More and more we'll keep doing so much so that you will it will be at the tip of your fingers.
Very good, very good. You know, you don't need me to explain this. We've already explained this. We know that, you know, producers actually tap in only to into 1% of the sun's solar energy. And as it goes from one trophic level to the next trophic level, only 10% of the energy is getting transferred at one level, while the remaining is actually lost from the body, right? Yes. Ma'am, uh, difference between thalamus and hypothalamus. Thalamus is response. It acts as a relay center between different parts of the body. Hypothalamus is responsible for regulating the functioning of the um, pituitary gland and it also is responsible for regulating body temperature. Okay? All right. Now let's move on everyone on your screens. Question number 33. After seven more questions, you will have a leaderboard. Okay? All right. Okay. Let's have a look everybody. Let's see. Okay. Very easy question. Why do aquatic animals have a faster rate of breathing? Uptake of gases in less time with help of gills. Aquatic animals require low oxygen for survival. Amount of oxygen dissolved in water is fairly low. None of the above. Yes. All right, everybody. This is a this is a pakka question. See, sometimes of NCRT only, they can, you know, give you this question in your boards also. They can ask you an MCQ based question or a two mark, give the reason question as to why this is seen. Okay. Super duper important. A give reason question can come. Yeah. Infinite easy question. Laddu question. Yes. Yeah. Very good. We know that in aquatic, especially when we look at water, we know that actually there's only about 5.3 ml of dissolved oxygen in one liter of water, right? Which is very less when compared to if I take one liter of air in land, right? I find so much more oxygen than when I find it in water, which is why we know that because of the less amount of, because the amount of dissolved oxygen is relatively low, their breathing rate is faster so that more amount can be pumped faster into their body. Right? So the correct answer here is option C. Yes. So for me, chocolate question. Right? I love chocolate. So this is a chocolate question. Super, super easy. Yes? All right. Now question number 34, everyone, on your screens. Right? Kaju Katli is Ankita Ma'am's Kaju Katli question. Right? So for me, we will do chocolate question. Because I eat a lot of chocolates. Yes. Okay. Now moving on to the next one. Yes? Identify X. Okay, again, look at your screens, right? You have an image of the heart, right? And it is pointing to one part. Now, as we know, it's a valve. Okay, all the options are valves. Is it bicuspid, tricuspid, semilunar or mitral? Okay. All right, everybody. All right. I hope all of you are answering and on the chat also. Be careful, everyone. In case, if you go little here and there, then we know that, you know, the moderator might block you. So, please make sure that you guys don't get distracted. If you are new, I see that a lot of new students have joined us. Welcome, welcome. If you are new, please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you like this video. And I'm Aishwarya and I'm helping you with biology. And, ha. Well done, everybody. I can see that the majority of you got tricuspid valve. See, if you saw the image, the image was pointing to the valve on the chambers between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And the valve that exists between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. Now, if it is on the left side, then it is the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. Semilunar valves are those valves which are present between the aorta. Right? That's why this is an easy question and chocolate question. Right? Yes. Hello. hello. Um, hi. If you can tell me your name, I will be able to take your name. Right? Ma'am, why not option A in the last question? Because the in the question that you saw, the valve mark was on the right side. That's like I said. Right atrium, right ventricle. And the tricuspid valve is present between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Okay? All right. Now moving on to the next one. Yes, hypergaming, I hope I've answered your question. Which of the following facts are correct about translocation of food in plants? Again, read the options. It is an energy dependent process. Osmotic pressure plays an important role. Food is transported from its source to its sink. Or is it all of the above? We are talking about translocation. 
हेलो वर्षा हेलो ये वॉट टू प्रोसेसेस वॉट इज टू प्रोसेसेस इन प्लांट रेस्पिरेशन so there mainly you have three processes broadly when you talk about plant plant respiration but i'm a little confused as your question so uh, kush could you be a little more specific ma'am why can't we say that embryo form seed instead of ovule because the seed is the whole structure embryo is the part inside the ovule that is why you cannot say that right very good everyone very good See, we are talking about translocation of food, right? So, what is translocation? It's nothing but the transport of food by the phloem from the leaves to both upper and lower parts, right? And we know that it's an energy-dependent process. It's an active process, and of course, due to difference in osmotic pressure, this process takes place. Yes, and we know that food is transported from where it's produced to where it is required, which is why the correct answer here is all of the above. So are we clear, everyone? Are we clear? I mean, ICC food chain is not there, no. ICC food chain, you learn it in your lower grades, right? I think in eighth standard you learn about it. All right, ma'am. Please explain why valves do not have uh, arteries don't have valves. It's a very easy question, right? So when we talk about arteries, right? We know that arteries are nothing but structures, okay? So let me just erase this and make some space. So what are arteries? Arteries are nothing but blood vessels that transport blood away from the heart, right? So what do they do? They transport blood away from the heart. And if they're transporting blood away from the heart, we know that the heart is the pump, right? So which means it is pumping the blood. That means blood is flowing at a very high pressure already. So it is flowing at a high pressure. and the heart is constantly rhythmically beating and relaxing that means that there's no way in which even if the blood wants to flow back this is constantly pumping blood at all times and as a result they have no need of valves which is why they have no valves right so i hope i have clarified your doubt on this so now moving on to question number 36 everybody on your screens right question number 36 yes yeah yeah i'll speed it up don't worry last 10 to we will go super fast Okay, which option correctly shows the transport of oxygen to the cell? You have four options from which you need to figure out the correct answer. See, four combinations are there. That means you will take, you can get confused here. Yes, so please don't get confused, my dear students. Please don't get confused. Yes. Leaderboard will come after the next set of questions. Okay, it will come after the fortieth question. Best reference book. Start with learning in NCERT. Go to exemplar. Then go to best chance for extra questions. Yes. Fourteen second time confuse consuming. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, we were not disturbing, but we are. Then moderator gave us time out. Arey, don't worry, Manan. Don't worry. Very good, everybody. Very good. Okay, don't worry. Yes. See now the thing is. we are talking about transport of oxygen to the cells so we know that from the lungs the i mean the pulmonary vein brings in the oxygenated blood to the left atrium left atrium will send it to left ventricle from the left ventricle it will pump it through the largest artery that is the aorta which takes oxygen to the body cells now here pulmonary vein does not take it to the right side wrong don't even read the rest lungs pulmonary artery no pulmonary artery brings the blood to the lungs from the heart right which is why this is not the option lungs pulmonary artery no no reading after that from the lungs what brings it see okay it's not if it if it was pulmonary artery then lungs okay you can consider right but that's not the case from lungs pulmonary artery does not come any blood vessel leaving an organ and going towards the heart is a way any blood vessel going from the heart to an organ is a artery right always remember this yes ma'am how is oxygen and carbon dioxide transported oxygen is transported by the red blood cells especially by hemoglobin which where in uh, hemoglobin will combine with oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin carbon dioxide also it's partially transported through the plasma and some amount with the hemoglobin right okay now moving on to the next one right question number 37 okay i ayana okay i will keep that in mind all right ayana all right yes 
Hi mom, I'm enjoying this question. It's amazing if you're enjoying, make sure that you like this video, right? Like, like, like. I hope we have reached 200 likes. Yes, Shiva, have we reached 200? One like is pending for 200. Guys, come on. If any of you are still not like this video, hit that like button. We need 200 likes, yes? And Shiva will tell me when we have hit that. We hit it. Amazing. Okay, chal. Alright guys, moving on to the next one. Identify which of the following statements about thyroxine is incorrect. Read this. Incorrect. Okay, don't get confused. You have four options. I am not reading it, but you will find the answer. Right? Yes, finally 200. But 200 was a low target. We said we should have said 500 as the target. Next, 300 likes. Right? All right, everybody. All right. Let's have a look. It's a very easy question, right? So we have 45 seconds for this particular question. But nonetheless, don't worry. This should be an easy one, right? Very good. Very good. See, so we're talking about thyroxine. What is thyroxine? Thyroxine is produced by the thyroid gland, right? And we know that it's also called as thyroid hormone sometimes. Now we know that it is responsible for regulating metabolism in the body. And we know that it requires iodine to synthesize it. Not iron. Right? Which is why the incorrect option is option D. So are we clear with this? Very simple and easy. Right? Halwa question. Now moving on to question number 38 on your screens. Yes? All right. The offspring formed by sexual reproduction exhibit more variations because of what? Sexual reproduction is a lengthy process. Genetic material comes from two parents of same species. Genetic material comes from two parents of different species. Genetic material comes from many parents. Read the question, right? Ma'am, spores parent body breaks after maturation. So, in the case of spores, the sporangium will break, right? And it will release the spores. Okay. Mom, I just said hello two times and the moderator gave me time out. Shiva, let's be careful a little. Okay, we, I will tell I've told Shiva he is not going to do it unless you spam. Yes? Okay, and all the best for your pre-birth, everyone. All the best. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well done, everybody. You did not get confused. Genetic material or why does variations occur? Because in sexual reproduction, you have two parents, right? And genetic material comes from two parents of the same species, not of different species. If they are of two different species, most often they're not. In some cases, an offspring can be formed, but it will be an infertile offspring, right? Or a sterile offspring. So the correct answer is this. Now, two more questions and then lead a board, right? Everybody lead a board. So everyone, let's have the energy. If our energy has gone down a little, if we are feeling ki, oh ma'am, abhi nahi hoga, let's get the josh back, right? I have so much josh in me just because of all of you. So I hope that that josh remains high at all times, yes? Okay, okay. All right. Hello, Pranavi. Hello. I think I have already answered your question. Yes, uh, that is uh, sports, parent body breaks. Spore, the parent body does, doesn't break in spore formation, right? Alright, I'll take this question in just a bit. I'll explain this to you. Just give me a moment. Let's finish this question and then we'll get to it, okay? Some doubts are there which I want to answer. Oh, okay. Humans have two different sex chromosomes, X and Y. Based on the principles of sex determination, a male offspring will inherit, inherit which chromosome? You have four options from which you can identify the correct answer. Yes? Okay, now for those of you who are having science exam tomorrow, now you know your full end-to-end -end science revision is done today, no? Tomorrow you guys will be acing it. I am 100% sure. Yes. I know, I hope I've got your thing correctly. Yes? Alright. 
Ma'am, why is diffusion to meet uh, in multi? Why is diffusion efficient to meet oxygen requirement for multicellular organisms? See, for molecules like oxygen, which are small, we see that most often they're not. I mean, for molecules like oxygen, diffusion is there across the alveoli. Right? And we know that there are many alveoli which improve the process of diffusion, wherein larger surface area for more oxygen to enter into the blood. Yes? Very good. This is an easy one, right? Because when we talk about male offspring, the genetic combination is X and Y. Wherein the combination of X and Y chromosome from either of its parent. Okay. See, X will come. X will come mainly from the mother, right? I mean, from the mother. Y will come only from the sperm. Y cannot come from the parent, right? But since we see that, we see that both the Y chromosomes from one of its parent, combination of X chromosomes from either, because the other options don't really make sense, this is the correct answer. But understand that Y chromosome can come only from the father, right? Y cannot come from the mother, yeah? Now, question number 40, everyone, on your screens, yes? Yeah? On your screens. Yes. All right, everybody. Let's get started and have a look at the question. Okay. Select the group which shares maximum number of common characters. Okay. Two individuals of a species, two species of a genus, two genera of a family, two genera of two families. Ooh. Yes. Yes, yes, we'll pace it up. Last 10 questions. I'll take 10 more minutes maximum. That's all. By 9 o'clock, like I told you, you know, 9, 9.15, we'll be winding this up. Yes? So, that is my promise. Uh, Aroma Journal, I will do it after this question. I'll take a board and I'll explain this to you. Okay, let's see. <laughs> well done everybody well done now for a lot of you who are confused with this we know that two individuals of a species right now in a species they are the cl most closely related organisms which means that the what do you say the uh, common feature or the characters or common characters are maximum in a species right Two species of the same genus, relatively less similarity. Two genera of family, relatively lesser. And two genera, no way. And for those of you, especially 10th graders, I do understand even for you guys, diversity in living organisms in your 9th grade was deleted. But nonetheless, if you aspire to be a doctor tomorrow, you want to continue into PCMB combination where you have biology. I am taking a chapter on classification of living organisms. For your future, that's a very important chapter. I'll be taking it next Friday. So you can stay tuned. I'll be helping you out with this, okay? So, not to worry, right? All right. So, let's have a look, everyone. Leaderboard, right? Let's have a look at the leaderboard after the next set of questions. Leaderboard would have gone a lot of, diff, you know, modifications. But I can see Blah here is on top. Who is Blah? Please tell me. No, I want your name. You have full imposter ka emoji. We have the Panshi was also the fastest. Mamita, Snuggles, Raghavan, Ayana, the adorable. Okay. Anshul, then I can see that Amrita, Ritwik and Yakshit are on the top 10. Well done, everybody. Well done. Yes. My blood pressure increases with age. To be honest, Realistically, it does not, right? But because of stress or maybe lifestyle, there could be depositions on the walls of the arteries, which in turn could increase blood pressure, right? So that could be a reason. Yes, all right. So a lot of you are sharing your ranks and if you see 40 questions are done, we have 10 more questions, right? Last 10 questions and our complete syllabus revision would be done with that. So, how excited are all of us? Are we excited? Are we ready to ace our board exams? How is the Josh in the chat? Right? How is the Josh, everyone? Ma'am, I joined very late, so I'm only on 68th rank. Nonetheless, it's okay. It's all about learning, right? We all need to learn. That is what we need to know. Yes? Okay. Ma'am, fast please. Are, no problem. I'll be doing it fast. Don't worry. If you have just joined, you make sure you like this button, you like this video and you make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Right? Super, super high. Okay. Ma'am, please open chat. Oh, let's enable some chat. Right? I have enabled chat, I think. 
Yes, stats are enabled for all of you. Mom, I'm hungry. No problem. Okay, you can flood this chat with a lot of love, right? All of your ranks are coming in. Mind is blown. Awesome. Mom, questions are correct, but rank is not in top. Josh is out. No. <coughs> Don't let your Josh to go up. Now for those of you, whatever your rank might be, if you're getting answers wrong, it's not about getting your answers wrong. It's about learning how to solve questions, right? So please make sure. Safe period. Okay. So everybody, let's keep the questions limited, right? So we know about contraception. I close the chat. So let's get started, right? A match mentee. Match mentee is over. I think Kushbu ma'am had taken it. So in the meanwhile, everyone, I hope all of you watched the edition of Quizmasters this time with Saurabh Sir and I did. And I hope that you guys would want to be the next Baiju's Quizmaster. And I hope you all enjoyed it because you know that the next edition is coming in January. Dates will be announced very soon. So all of you, please make sure that you register for it, right? Yes. Lot of neat aspirants here. That is amazing. For all you neat aspirants, I will tell you that. By Juice, uh, 9 and 10 channel is your place for biology. And when you're going for NEET, go to Akash By Juice NEET. We have Sachin Kapoor sir. He's a veteran, right? Learning from him, learning from Pankuri ma'am, learning from so many others who are there in the channel for your physics preparation. You have Brunal sir. For chemistry, you have Anoop sir. You have such esteemed teachers in the channel. So please make sure that you go. Go to go get subscribed to Akash By Juice NEET. You will find your everything there, right? Okay. JE aspirant, go to JE, Akash JE, that is there. We have so many esteemed teachers there also. We have everybody for you, right? Now, of course, for those of you who are asking me, ma'am, uh, two questions. Uh, how to write subjective questions? I think I have already made a video on that. You can check it out in the channel, right? Ma'am, sports parent body breaks after maturation. Aditya has been asking me this question. Now, spores in fungi, right? So, when I talk about spores in fungi, we will not say parent body. Now, I am telling you about fungi here specifically. When the sporangium breaks, we will not say that the parent will die, right? Because it is a structure. So, we see that this will break and the spore will fall down. But nonetheless, we see that the fungi will have its own, you know, life cycle. But the sporangium will break, okay? I hope that I have cleared this question. All right, ma'am, could you explain the difference between multiple fission and spore formation? Spore formation is something we observe in fungi, wherein we see that in the sporangium, there are small powdery substances called as spores, wherein each spore will germinate into a new organism, right? Now, multiple fission is something we observe in organisms like plasmodium, right? So, in plasmodium, what do we see during some unfavorable conditions? We see that a parent cell, we see that the nuclei will split, Yes, and we see that there will be many, many structures here, right? And it will be enclosed within a cyst. And during unfavorable conditions, it will remain like this. When it is favorable, we see that all of them that are there will then form or they will be released, each of which forming a plasmodium. So, a single nuclei will split into multiple nuclei and eventually giving rise to multiple offspring. So, are we clear? Are we clear? Parental body will break. Yes, Amrita, parental body will break, right? Ma'am, you said you will say mitosis and meiosis. Of course, I will tell you guys. Right? Now, mitosis is nothing but it is equational division. So, what is equational division? Equational division is when the parent, right? When the parent cell undergoes a division and it produces offsprings, which has the same number of chromosomes, right? So, the parent cell will undergo changes or undergo cell division, which will give rise to daughter cells with same number of chromosomes as the parent. While in meiosis, we call it as reductional division, right? And what do we mean by reductional division? We see that in meiosis, the parent cell will undergo undergo changes such that it will give rise to four daughter cells that will have only half the number of chromosomes. So, if this has two N, all of them will have N, N, N. So, the number gets divided. This is something we see in all the body cells or the somatic cells. By here, this is something we see in gametes or the reproductive cells. Yes? All right, ma'am, what is osmosis? Okay, two hours, ten minutes, okay? Yes, now the rest of the questions I will take towards the end so that whoever, whoever of our friends want to finish Menti, they can finish Menti and go. Those of you who have doubts, stay back in the class and I will teach you that, okay? 
So don't worry about it. We'll finish off the last ten questions, and those of you who have doubts, stay back in class. I'll explain it to you. Okay. So now let's move on to round three. Everyone, go back to Menti. Yes, everyone. Okay. All of you with doubts, just stay back in class. I will take your doubts, okay? And if the others want to stay back, also you can stay back. But if you're just here to do your revision and go for your study or your dinner, you can do that. Not a problem. Yes. Okay. Question number forty-one. Everyone on your screens. Yes. Which which one is a possible progeny in F two generation of tall pure pure bred tall plant with round seed? And short plant with wrinkled seeds. It's a Mendelian question. <coughs> Take the answer as it is, right? Okay. All right, everybody. Twenty seconds. See, you have more time to solve this question, right? And I hope that you all get the answer for this. Ma'am, I have some doubt. Okay, all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right. Okay. Well done. Well done. See, we are talking about. Two generation of pure bred tall plant with round seed. So that means we have two characters here. We have it's a dihybrid cross. You have tall with round. You have short with wrinkled. Right. That means that all these possibilities are possible. Which is why the correct answer here is all of the above. Right. Very simple and easy. Now moving on to the next question. Yes, question number forty-two on your screens. Yes, everyone, focus. Last set of questions, and then I will do your doubts. Don't worry. A lot of you are asking me doubts on the chat. I will take your doubts. Don't worry about it. Yes. Okay. Last set of questions. Answer fast to get some more points. Ozone forms by combination of free oxygen atoms and oxygen molecules. How do free oxygen atoms form at higher levels of the atmosphere so if you have paid attention to my explanation i have already given you the answer to this so just have a look at this you will be able to answer yes i have already given you the answer all of you asking me osmosis bachas i will give you the answer please we will finish off the quiz and then i will do all the doubts okay then i am all yours with doubts yes okay Yes, everyone. I'm sure most of you have answered. Some of you are still joining Menti now, so please go ahead. You still have time to answer this. Yes. Okay, everyone. All right. This should be easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Very simple. Very good, very good. See, I told you why you had one minute to solve this because of the options, right? So we are talking about how free oxygen atoms are formed. We know that molecular oxygen will get split into oxygen atoms in the presence of UV radiations. I already told you, right? So we know that UV radiations from the sun are high energy and they split the oxygen atoms, or Oc molecular oxygen into oxygen atoms. This oxygen atom will then react with your molecular oxygen, giving you your ozone, right? Which is why the correct answer here is option number B, right? So with this, of course, if you see, we've got a look at this. Now moving on to the next question, question number forty-three, right? Let's have a look, everyone. Okay, all right. Yes, um, yes, I, uh, Ayana, I will make sure I get your name right, but please don't spam, right? Please don't spam on the chat. Let's have a look, everyone, on your screens. Answer fast to get more points. You have an assertion reason question here. Assertion says that polythene bags and plastic containers are non-biodegradable. Reason being that they can be broken down by microorganisms into organic molecules. What is the right answer for this? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Soumya, for helping me out with the definition of osmosis. Thank you so much. Yes. 
Very easy question. I'm telling you, this is so easy. How do, this is from our environment, everybody. So even if you've not learned our environment, think of it logically and you'll be able to answer this, right? We're talking about, they can be broken down by microorganisms into organic molecules. I'm seeing a lot of incorrect answers in the chat, okay? I'm telling you, don't believe the chat. Some answers are coming incorrect. I will tell you now only. Yes, all right, everybody. All right, let's have a look. Well done, everybody. Well done. Most of you have got the answer correctly. Nine of you, I mean, around 14 of you who made a mistake here, it's okay. See, polythene bags, what are they? Polythenes are made of polymers, right? And we know that they are non-biodegradable. If they are non-biodegradable, they cannot be broken down by microorganisms, which is why the reason in itself is false, right? So now question number 44. Very easy questions, all of them are, right? Assertion is confusing. Assertion is confusing, but assertion, look at the statement. It's telling polythene is non-biodegradable. Rest of the words are there, but you look at non-biodegradable. It's not non-biodegradable. I mean, it is non-biodegradable, so it's correct. But for something to be biodegradable, it will be broken down by microbes. If it is not biodegradable, cannot be broken down by microbes, right? Yes, you misplaced it. Hey, no problem, no problem. Question number 44, everybody, on your screens. Okay. <laughs> In humans, if gene B gives brown eyes and gene small b gives blue eyes, what will be the color of the person having the combination BB and BB? What is the correct answer? This should be very easy. Everything is there in the question only. This is so easy, everyone. So easy. Ma'am, you don't ask 10 questions. will be hard. See, hard is when you perceive it, right? You had so many questions from the beginning and I explained so many concepts to you already that now you know how to apply it. So even if they are hard, it's easy for you only. Is this chocolate question for all of you? Is this a chocolate question? Very easy, no? Ma'am, misclicked. No. Okay. It's fine. But you knew the answer. No, that's all that I matter. That's all that matters to me. Right? Yes, chocolate question. Amazing. Very good. So we know that here this is heterozygous condition. This is homozygous condition. And they're saying that this gene here gives brown color. That means that in homozygous and heterozygous condition, the dominant gene will always express itself based on law of dominance, which is why this is the correct answer. Very easy. Now question number 45. Everyone, question number 45 on your screens. Yes? Okay. Let's have a look. One plant with round green seeds and another one with wrinkled yellow seeds are crossed. F1 plants are selfed. New phenotypes found in F2 are round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow, wrinkled green. Right? So what are the new phenotypes that you find amongst the following? So here you have, it's very easy actually. If I explain it once more, I'll give the answer I feel. So you guys go ahead and do it. Okay. All right, everyone. Ma'am, options are not clear. You will be able to see there's a fifth option. Just ignore the fifth option. Okay, that's a glitch. So I think some of you are new to the class and you're new to my class. So very quickly, I hope you've been enjoying it, right? Hope you've enjoyed today's class. Ma'am, option zoom karo. Aapke menti mein ye option zaroor aayega. Ab menti mein jaake ye answer kar dijiye. Okay, all right. Very good, everybody. Very good. See, if you look at all the four options, two are already as the question, right? So you're talking about round green, wrinkled yellow. And when you go to F1 and F2 generation and you do dihybrid cross, you also get round and yellow and you get green and wrinkled, which means that those are the four combinations. So what are the new genotypes that you are getting, new phenotypes that you are getting from parent, round, yellow and green and wrinkled? Which is why the correct answer that is there is option B. Yes? 
Very simple and easy, right? Now let's move on to the next question. Oops. Okay. Let's move on to question number 46, everyone. 47. Oh, nice. Question number 47, last three questions. Yes, on your screens. Okay, again you have an assertion reason statement. The effect of oxygen hormone on growth of root is exactly opposite to that on a stem. Reason being, oxygen helps in senescence. I have already explained this to you in question number 2. Right? When I explained phytohormones, I explained it in question number 2. This is a repetition. Very simple and easy. Yes? Yes, Sudha, uh, Sudha please. Senescence is aging. Right? It's a simple way of parts becoming old. Right? But if I give you this answer, you will be able to crack the answer for this. Right? Yes, okay, a lot of you are asking me, ma'am, I think I've explained most of the questions. I hope all of your doubts are clear. Most of your doubts, I've tried to take it as and when I'm explaining this, so I hope it is clear. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, very good. See, effect of auxin on the growth of the root, right? It's exactly opposite. So, mainly if you see auxin helps with cell elongation, right? And we see that it helps in cell elongation and it has opposite effect. Mainly effect of cytokinin is there on the stem. But auxin helps in senescence. No, auxin will delay all of this, right? It's promoting growth. What helps in senescence or aging? They are your stress hormones like abscisic acid. Which is why I already told you, right? Abscisic acid is something that we have already looked at. Very good, everyone. Very good. Now, question number 48 on your screens. Yes? All right. Yes, Sudha, you can ask me your doubts. No problem, right? Can you do practicals if it's grade 10 practical? Please, let's stay focused, right? Senescence is aging, right? Okay. Answer fast to get some more points. What will the concentration of urine formed if the PCT of a patient with kidney ailments fails to work properly? So, what will happen if the PCT in the nephron will not work properly? Urine will be more concentrated, urine will be more diluted, urine will have very high concentration of sugar, urine might have traces of blood in it. Think about the role of PCT and answer, right? Or think about it simply. If it is PCT or the tubules, what is the role of the tubules, right? That's what something you need to know. All right, everybody, let's have a look. PCT stands for proximal convoluted tubule. I'll rephrase this to just putting tubules, right? Think about tubules of kidney. You don't have PCT, DCT in detail. So it's okay. Yes, okay. So the correct answer is urine will be more than, it will be more, uh, what do you say? We know that urine will be more dilute than usual, right? So in this case, we know that in the case of the tubules, they are necessary for reabsorption of water. And if they don't work properly, it can cause more water to be lost from the body, right? Which is why the correct answer here is option B. So are we clear with this? Are we clear, right? I was correct. Okay, very good, very good. So now let's move on to the last two questions. Okay, last two questions and we will move on. All right. The following results were obtained by a scientist who crossed F1 generation of pure breeding parents for round and wrinkle. So have a look at the question. You have a dominant trait which says round seeds, wrinkled which says uh, ring, uh, recessive trait which is wrinkled. How many offsprings did we get at F2? We got five, uh, 7, 5, 2, 4. Okay. We got 7, 5, 2, 4 uh, offsprings. How many, what are the actual number of round seeds he obtained? Now this is, 
a very very scary question right this is a little scary question not very simple and easy yes how many are how many or from the results it can be concluded that out of this the actual number of round seeds or how many total number of round seeds are there Hmm, very good everybody, very good. But here the correct answer is 5, 6, 4, 3. Now how did we arrive at 5, 6, 4, 3? It is very, very simple, right? So in this case, how many did we get as total offsprings, right? What were our total number of offsprings? At the end of F2, they said that we are getting 7, 5, 2, 4, right? These are the total now they are saying how many number of actual round that were there, right? Now round here is dominant, right? So this right here is your dominant trait. And if it is a monohybrid cross, you will get it in the ratio of 3 is to 1, right? So your phenotype is going to be 3 is to 1. So simply if you do 3 by 4, so total being 4, if you do 3 by 4 of 7, 5, 2, 4, you will get your answer. Right? So that will be your total number. That's I think roughly around the answer that is here. 5, 4, 5, 6, 4, 3. So are we clear everyone? Are we clear? Raghavan, yes. Reabsorption also. There is reabsorption of some amount of glucose and sugar as well. But mainly actually the question should have been DCT and not PCT. Right? So the correct answer here is option C. I mean option D. Yes? All right. Now moving on to the last question, everyone. Question number 50. Yes? Ma'am, it was a bit complicated, but I got it right. Did you enjoy that question, by the way? Did you find it interesting, all of you? The last one that we did. Did you find it interesting and amazing? Yes? How many of you liked that question? Yes. Super enjoyed. Yes, a lot. So we'll come with more and more of such questions. Don't worry. Okay? All right. Yes, hello Ishan, hello, okay. Ma'am, no, I didn't enjoy that question. No problem, man, and no problem at all, okay. This type of X will not come and we don't have PCT, exactly. Some of it I have given you a little bit extra, but nonetheless, don't worry, right. Now, last one is assertion reason. Arteries are thick-walled and elastic in nature. Reason being arteries have to transport blood away from the heart. I have already explained this to you, yes. Okay, just give me one moment, everyone. Yes, everyone, very quickly. So, I don't have my phone with me right now. So, very quickly, all of you, uh, till I get it back. Just please make sure that you are all answering. I don't have your comments with me. So I'll quickly open it in my laptop as well. Okay then. So let me quickly refresh the chat on screen. Very good. A lot of you are answering. Okay, well done, well done, but most of you got confused here. What happened? Arteries are thick-walled and elastic in nature and arteries have to, reason being that, arteries have to transport blood away from the heart. You know what, this answer is marked wrong, right? Because we know arteries have to transport blood away from the heart and as a result, they are thick-walled and elastic. So, this is actually correct. It has been incorrectly marked. It has been incorrectly marked. Right? So, very sorry about this, guys. Last one was an issue, but this is the correct answer. Okay? So, let's have a quick look at the leaderboard, everyone. And let's see what the final leaderboard says. Okay. So, let's see. I know the option has been marked wrong in the mentee, so I'm very sorry about that. But all of you, those 50 of you got the answer correctly. Right? Yes. So, well done. At the end of it, we have Momita. So, well done, Momita. You've scored 37,000. Oops. Let me close this. 
Yes, so you have scored 37,473 points. Well done. I can see Blood, Panchi, Raghavan, Snuggles, Aina, Anshul, Yakshay, Siddharth and Amrita who have done a brilliant job. Well done everybody. Well done. Yes. And I can see that a lot of you have posted your progress in the chat as well. Yes, well done everybody. Well done. So with this, how are you feeling about biology syllabus? Are you feeling a little more confident? Did you enjoy today's class? If you did, there is a homework for all of you. Okay. In today's class, I want you to tell me what more kind of questions do you want from biology, right? Do you want subjective questions, assertion reason questions? What is it that you are looking for? So you will have to let me know so that our team can plan accordingly, right? So please make sure that all of you do. And of course, I hope that you like the video and you have subscribed to the channel because you know, Baidu 6 to, I mean, 9 and 10 is the place for all of your preparation, right? And of course, everyone, if you still not like our video, please, please like this video. You share it with your friends and stay subscribed. And if you say it in the live chat, it will not be there. So you have to drop it in the comments. Now, for a lot of you who still have doubts, you can stay back and I'll quickly take a doubt solving session. Yes, and I will do it here. But for the others who have done and you are sure you're feeling confident, if you want to drop off, it's completely okay. Or you can stay and get some of your doubts clarified, right? So everybody, any more doubts that are there? Ma'am, are there any drastic variations in DNA? Can it make it? See, if there are drastic variations in the DNA, right? Now imagine this is the DNA and there are drastic variations. Now, it will not be to an extent. See, sometimes what happens is that if there are too many changes, right? Then the body will recognize it as unsuitable. And sometimes that cell with the variation or the DNA with the variation will get destroyed. So changes will start happening at a lower, like at a slow level. It starts happening at microscopic level and then it will get accumulated, right? Ma'am, how is phenotype dependent on the genotype? See, every character that is there is controlled by a gene, right? So, whether it is black hair, brown eyes, whatever is there, it is controlled by a gene. Now, the gene that is there is actually what will translate into the character. Curly hair, black hair, whatever. So, this genotype is nothing but the gene that is coding for it. So, that is how the genotype and the phenotype are related. Ma'am, vegetative parts in fungi, see vegetative parts mainly include your hyphae, right? And we also have the mycelium, which are the vegetative parts, right? Very simply put. Okay, all right, everybody. So, any more doubts or are we clear? Ma'am, explain double circulation. Oh, oh, double circulation is a huge thing. But we know that the heart is a four-chambered heart, which has right atrium, it has right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. And we know that from the body, deoxygenated blood is brought to the right atrium by the vena cava, right? So, vena cava brings in deoxygenated blood. And we see that the, this right atrium, it will then pump it to right ventricle. And from here, it will go to the lungs, right? And we know that the pulmonary artery is what is responsible for transporting it, where oxygenation takes place. Right? And from here, it goes into left atrium with the help of pulmonary vein. It goes to left ventricle. And from here, through the aorta, oxygenated blood is pumped. So, this right here is double circulation where the blood is flowing through the heart to Y. Yes? Okay. All right, everybody. So, now, of course, I think... Um, Ma'am, is the function of multiple fission and spore? No, multiple fission and spore formation are different. It is not the same. Yes. Law of segregation independent assortment is quite a big concept to teach. You can go and check out Ankita Ma'am's video on that because it's quite a huge thing to teach right now. If you've still not understood, we will do a doubt clearing session for heredity and evolution and we will do it once again. Okay. Ma'am, geotropism. See, geotropism is nothing but... Nothing but... Uh, movement with respect to gravity. So, the roots that are there grow towards gravity, hence they are positively geotropic. This is going or the stem goes away on the opposite side, so it's negatively geotropic, right? Ma'am, explain ozone formation. 
Ozone that is there is formed when we know that molecular oxygen is broken down into oxygen atoms, right, by UV radiations. Yes, and we know that this right here will then combine with your molecular oxygen that already exists in the atmosphere, forming ozone, right? So, this is the first splitting that takes place, then this combines with the existing molecular oxygen, all right? All right, everybody. So with this, I will be signing off. I know today's class went on super long. But I hope now all of your doubts are cleared. Any more doubts, do let me know in the comment section below. I'll help you out with it. And uh, all of you, please do not forget to let me know what kind of questions, what kind of sessions do you want in the next upcoming weeks apart from PYQs? Because we are going to be helping out and looking out for it. So kind of questions, everything, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll be signing off. Hoping to see you all very soon again, everybody. Bye-bye and have a nice day.